Hi everybody, it's uh, John Bank with another model inbox review. Today it's the turn of the Airfix 176 scale Panzer IV Series 2 military armour kit. Um, <clears throat> it's a nice image here of, um, I believe this is Black 413, which is actually a tank in the Bovington Tank Museum. Um, not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. I um, can't remember exactly where I got this image from. But it's a nice image, and it's actually the tank which I'll probably be doing the version of, the Africa Core variant in the Desert Sand Yellow. And it will be just like this, only mine will have number black 216 written on it, as per out of the box. <clears throat> so we'll go straight into the boxing history. The kit was originally released in 1971 on a Type 3 Red Stripe box. Um, one of the things that is worthy of note of this particular kit is it's quite highly regarded by the pro builders and reviewers online who all seem to have the same opinion that the tank is relatively well detailed for its size. It's quite accurate as well for, for an F, well, the FX kit is actually quite accurate amongst its competition. But it is a little bit of a tricky kit to build and not one that they would recommend as a first armour kit because of the number of small parts in its chassis and the build-up of the chassis and the road wheels and drive cogs and all the rest of it. The kit is actually quite, it's not a basic kit to build, <clears throat> but they do highly regard this kit and it's well respected by the professional community. So that's 1971's release, Red Stripe. I like the fact that the Airfix 00 scale was still in the scroll form here and they hadn't come up with their planetoid sort of circular logo yet. That's 1971. The kit was released as well by MPC the, the year after, um, in 1972, as a Rescue at Dunkirk um, diorama set, which involved um, different decals and a different paint scheme for the Panzer IV and some British infantry um, to reenact the Dunkirk if you like the Dunkirk scene in a diorama set. And this was um, released through MPC's American Agent for Airfix. Um, this kit is quite rare now, and if you manage to get a hold of one of these, um, they're, they're not as expensive as you'd think at the moment, but they probably will appreciate in price quite well. Um, so that's the Rescue at Diorama set, 1972. And then in 1973, Airfix re-released the kit in the Type 4 box. Exactly the same um, same artwork. Um, again, it's in Africa, called Colours, probably fighting somewhere in North Africa. Um, and they brought the the circular Airfix logo onto that lower panel border there to the box, um, which was a form of the Type 4 boxings. Um, so that's 1973. Also something that's worthy of note is the kits in double O scale here which of course is 176 and it's worthy of note because some of the later boxings from Borden Incorporated under the Humbrol Group um, listed this kit as 172nd scale as they did with most of their Airfix reboxed armour. Now 1973 went to 1974 and I don't know if any of you older hand guys out there from Britain can remember these combat sets. Um, I do remember them doing at least four of these. There was one for Stalingrad, and a th sorry, there were two for Stalingrad. One with German attack forces, and one with Russian defence forces. And the Russian defence force had a Yak 9D, and I believe a T34 tank. And the German attack forces had the Series One Airfix Messerschmitt 109G. And the Panzer IV kit with some German infantry. I think the Russian defence set had Russian infantry. But they also did an El Alamein set, which um, I'm sure featured a Grant tank. I believe it was a Grant tank. And the German tank, I think, was a Panther um, in the North Africa campaign. And the two aircraft involved in that, I think, were a P-40 Kitty Hawk. And for the German air forces, I uh, can't honestly remember, um, but it probably would have been either a Focke-Wulf FW-190, poss possibly not actually, possibly another Messerschmitt. Um, <clears throat> not 100% sure on that. But they also did a, um, 
the uh, Overlord set. I'm pretty sure they did an Overlord set, British Forces, with uh, a Spitfire Mark IX, a Churchill tank, and a Tiger, and I think it was um, another Messerschmitt. I think it was, I think it, I'm pretty sure it was another Messerschmitt G6 in that that set as well. So I'm pretty sure they did six sets, but I do remember buying this set, the Stalingrad German Attack Forces, and the Russian set with the T-34. <clears throat> that definitely had a Yak 9D. I don't distinctly remember it. <clears throat> and these sets are quite... They're getting quite collectible as well. And again, they're not as expensive as people would think they are. They're still quite abundant, but they are getting rarer and collectible. So that's 1974 with the Stalingrad German Attack Forces, and that featured the Panzer IV, of course. 1978 saw the Planetoid label here on Planetoid Airfix logo with the Panzer IV tank in white um, insignia. And again, it's marked H000 model kit, um, which lends it to 176 scale. This kit was released in 1976. This is a Type 5 Planetoid logo box. And then the kit were the kits were released by Borden Incorporated under the Humbrol Group. And a lot of the Series 2 armour and a lot of aircraft kits were released in what was called the Blueprint style boxings. And I quite like the Blueprint style boxings, but I always found it funny that what they were sat on usually had nothing to do with the tank. Well, in this case, it's actually sat on a map, which is sort of away from what they used to come up with. Now, I'm not quite sure what happened here, because in 1983, the kit was released in this style box, and in 1986, it was re released in this style box as well. I'm sorry about some of the pictures, but some of the pictures are quite difficult to get a hold of. But this style box, I think, is exactly the same as the other style box, but the kit wasn't on the shelves for about a year, maybe a year and a half. And it was reintroduced um, in 1986 with the with the um, the blueprint style boxings again. But again, it's sat on a map here. You can see that clear as day, which is um, interesting. <clears throat> The other thing that I find interesting about this particular image is the builder of this tank hasn't put the spare road wheels in this tray, which is what this tray was built for on the Panzer IV. It would have stored two of these wheels, and these spare wheels come in the kit, but he hasn't put them on this particular model for display, which is interesting. 1986 um, went to 1987, and uh, Humbrol Group started to release a lot of their models um, in what... I call the white border boxing style. Um, it's like a picture frame in white with the massive Airfix logo. <clears throat> <clears throat> and something that goes away here, yes, the kit's in Series 2, but it's clearly marked by this company as 172nd. The kit is not 172nd, it's 176th, um, which is interesting. So that's 1987. Again, in 1994, it was released with a similar style boxing, but this time incorporating flying hours. The box is virtually identical in every way, except for the flying hours embossed on the box itself. 1994, then went to 1995, and this is actually the boxing that I have the kit um, in. And it's, again, it's marked clearly marked 172nd scale. It has flying hours on the side of the box. You can just see them there. Um, and they're definitely on the side of my box as well. And it's marked skill level 3, and that is because of the complexity of the chassis. And you'll see that when you have a look at the instructions and the parts in a minute. Um, 1995 went through to 19, uh, sorry, 2005. And this was when, um, I think they, they were called McGovern and another partner he had, who were an Irish couple who purchased... Um, <clears throat> they purchased Humble Group lock, stock and barrel and introduced a lot of other kits into the Airfix and Humble range. But the way you can tell is that they started to put a, like the swirling lower border in silvery and white sort of trim. And also the kit is marked with Panzer IV in yellow and tank in black. Um, the serial number is clearly marked there, 02308, and there's a reason why I'm pointing that out because you'll see in the next rendition boxing that that was changed, but they've reverted back to 176 scale, which is correct. The kit is definitely 176 scale. Another thing about this particular style of boxing is that sometimes this word Panzer IV might have been printed in black and the word tank may have been printed in yellow. They often switch these two colours around on this style of boxing. So that was 2005. 2008, 
exactly the same type of boxing, but they reintroduced a new serial number by adding an A prefix to the serial number here. But everything else is exactly the same. 2008 then went to 2012 <clears throat> when Hornby Productions released this kit in their red bordered boxes. Um, and one of the things I quite like about the Hornby release is that you can get the tank in two completely different versions. Um, don't get me wrong, you can get the tank in two versions with all the previous um, boxings, but in this case you can get an Eastern Front variant in tank grey and an Africa Core variant in desert yellow. In all of the previous boxings of this kit, you could only get it in desert yellow Africa Core colours. But you could still get the ALSF F1 with the short barreled howitzer or the ALSF F2 with the long barreled anti tank 76mm guns. So that's 2012. The model was again re released in 2018 by Hornby Productions, but this time as part of their Vintage Classic series. You can actually buy this kit on the shelves in your local model shops now under these guises of Vintage Classics. And I like the idea that Hornby are bringing back some of the older kits which may or may not have been on the shelves for a long, long time. Uh, the Panzer IV wasn't one of these kits that wasn't on the shelves, but they are bringing into the Vintage Classic series a lot of models that uh, Airfix just haven't released for years and years and years. Um, it is worthy of note that if you look on their website at the moment, um, they're bringing four aircraft kits, which um, I'm quite interested in getting my hands on. Uh, one of them is a Savoyar Marchetti SM79, the second is a P61 Black Widow, and they're also releasing the Domini T Mark I and the Handypage Jetstream as vintage classic kits. So it'll be nice to see them. I think they're coming sometime in the October to November time later this year. So that's 2018. That's the vintage range. That's the modern day uh, release. You can find this kit on the shelves in the shops in your local area now. Um, there's a nice image here of a Panzer IV Els F2 in i think this is in european colors um and this is the kit that i'll be this is the version of the kit that i'll be building the f2 but mine will obviously be in the africa core desert sand colors so what i'd like to do now is quickly bring the camera down to have a look at what we're actually viewing and this is what we're viewing here here we go let's bring that up to there let's take my um <coughs> pen out of the way a little bit <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a bit of a frog on my throat. This is this is the um, I think this was the 1995 release with the kit in um, I think this was the late, latter stages of Borden Borden Incorporated and Humble Group releasing boxings. And there's the flying hours that are on the side of the box that I mentioned earlier. The kit is marked and boxed up as 172nd scale, but it isn't. It's definitely 176 scale. Kit is definitely molded in double OHO scale. I want to just take um, let's take this tape off the bottom of the box here and put all this stuff into here and just go through the packaging and everything in the correct order that I normally go go through them with. Right, first of all, <clears throat> this is just uh, a little bit of nostalgia. <laughs> You've got a, a compliment slip here. But it's actually a join the official Airfix Modelers Club form. And it's interesting there that the subscription annually was £12.99. Now, I remember being in the Airfix Modelers Club a long, long time ago in the 70s. Um, and I think it was £5 joining fee, or it might even have been less than that. I can't remember it's Ali, but it, it, there was no annual fee. You just... Um, you just got newsletters and you got a, uh, an Airfix Modelers Club badge and everything, which is great. But it's interesting that even in the 90s, they were trying to get 13 quid a year out of everybody, which is interesting. But that's that's a little compliment slip. The <clears throat> instructions. I was a bit disappointed with the instructions. Um, they're A4 size, but they just shout at you that they're photocopies. They are definitely photocopies. I think there's a master back in Airfix in the 90s. And I think they just put that in the photocopier machine and just zapped off maybe a couple of thousand copies to put into their model boxes before they were sent out to the shops. Um, you've got typical usual stuff Airfix give you on the instruction leaflets. got on the front page, description of the kit, the serial number, and then there's some um, information, history and stats in five different languages, which is quite nice. General instructions listed under there. And then you've got some special instructions and keynotes 
and keys for the instructions of the kit as to what to do, when not to do, how to do, uh, usual stuff. And then you've got the actual build itself, which is in six different steps. And the first step is the reason why this kit is a skill level three, and the reason why the pro builders are stating that this kit is quite a fiddly build. And they even say in the instructions, the use of tweezers is recommended for the handling of these small parts. And I would recommend tweezers to handle these small parts as well, especially these return rollers here. These are really, really small, as you'll see in the parts soon. But the kit is relatively quite detailed, as you'll see again in the parts soon. But the, these parts, there's quite a lot of road wheels to the Panzer IV, and they are relatively small. <clears throat> and the other interesting thing about them is that the drive sprockets that go on the front of the chassis sides and the rear idler sprockets that go on the back are actually in two separate parts and they're both handed so you have to make sure that you get the parts glued to the correct parts and that they're adhered to the correct side of the chassis otherwise the kit may not go together at all well um, as, as as expected section two you've got the turret and the turret builds up in two different versions there you've got the ALF f1 with the 75 millimeter how it's a short barreled gun and its respective uh, gun holder and then you've got the ALF F2, which is part 64 and 65, which is the long barreled 75mm anti-tank gun <clears throat> with its respective correct mount. And then that, those two parts, sub-assemblies, go into part 66, which is the gun mantlet. And they will both fit into the back of part 67, which you just clip into the back of the gun mantlet. And that should allow the guns to elevate and the turret should rotate around a standard pin, which is underneath part 69 there, in the usual fashion. Uh, section 3, you're putting the body shell together and all of the uh, the kit basic body together here. What I tend to do <clears throat> with my military armour kits, as you'll see with my build progress, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a real frog in my throat, I can't seem to get rid of it, is I tend to not put the, the wheels or the drive cogs or idle sprockets or any of that, but I probably will put the return rollers because they don't have tyres on them. Um, I'll be putting all that um, on after I've painted the sides of the chassis to get a decent finish on the sides. And then you'll put the body shell together and then you'll put all the road wheels and the drive sprockets and everything on as an afterthought at the end of section three. Section four, you've got the back panel there with... Um, I think it's an exhaust pipe and a jerry can, a few other fittings there that go on the back. And then in section five, you're putting the front fixtures on, and there's those two spare road wheels there that fit into that side pannier, which is quite good. Machine gun and spare track go on the front of the lower glacis there, and some lights, and the driver's hatch. Um, and I'm not sure what the other hatch is. It's probably a machine gunner's hatch. And then in section six, you're basically just clipping the turret into the top of the hole and adhering the... Um, tracks to the to the wheels it's marked there do not cement but they usually recommend that you heat treat the tracks but i tend to staple them um, but i might have a go at heat treating these because there's no side panniers to hide the staples which is a shame so that's the um instruction um <clears throat> the method of instruction covered on the instructions here and on the back you've got a clearly defined paint guide and tra transfer id locator and there's only one variant here, which is the Africa Core. Um, but you get two different guns for the ALS F1, which is the short barreled howitzer, or the ALS F2, which is the long barreled anti tank gun. And it's painted in 83 buff. Um, I tend to do my tanks in a slightly different colour to that. But uh, we'll have a look, see what that colour looks like. And matte black for the tyres. Well, I tend to use tyre black from the Tamiya range, acrylic range, which is. I think a better colour for that. The transfers, uh, transfers, don't try not to laugh. The transfers are one of the things that the pro builders um, give negative feedback on this kit for because the transfers, as you can see, are pretty basic and they're pretty pathetic. Basically, it consists of three crosses, two sets of numbers, and an Africa core insignia there in white, which is a palm tree. And the, although the transfers are quite they're quite defined they're quite good register and they're, they're, they're quite thin you know the the backing film's crystal clear there's not a lot there is there i think deckling this kit will take about two minutes so that's the transfers they seem okay the uh the vinyl tracks are much of a muchness but again there's another issue with the vinyl tracks which um a lot of the pro builders have put on their reviews apparently the holes in the vinyl track which you can see here 
don't line up with the drive sprocket on the front of the chassis and they recommend you sand down the majority of the drive sprocket's teeth that go into the track to allow the track to go around the drive sprocket properly. Now I will be test fitting this track to see if that's the case and if it is I'll be doing just that. But that's it's basically much of a muchness for a vinyl track. Now then, the parts. I'm not going to go for Dantic with the parts here, but that's the number of road wheels. There's quite a lot there. The detail on the actual idler sprockets there are quite it's quite good and quite crisp, isn't it? And then you've got the chassis, and they're quite nicely detailed as well. They're quite nice parts. Quite a nicely detailed and crisp kit. There's very, very little in the way of flash or burrs and bits and pieces to remove on this kit. And even the uh, the muzzle brake on the end of that 75mm anti-tank gun is pretty clear and crisply moulded. I like the look of that too. It's a shame they didn't drill the end out, but you can always do that yourself. Give it a bit of extra realism, which is nice. Um, this track has uh, given me a bit of grief. <laughs> there we go. The second sprue, there are four in all, <clears throat> comprises of some detailed parts there. You can see some jerry cans, quite nicely moulded, and the body shell, upper surfaces of the body there, that's quite nicely moulded as well. Um, the Commander's Capola, that's nice and crisp and nicely moulded. Quite like the look of that, so those parts look quite good too. The upper surfaces of the body here, there's not a lot to write home about the underside, but there's quite a bit that's going on there with the upper side of the body. The radiators are nice and crisp and clear. The grills, they're the grill vents for the engines. The back panel there is again nicely moulded, it's a nicely moulded part. Pro builders find this kit actually quite accurate in shape as well as detail, and they like this kit. It's quite highly praised. Spare track there, that's an an injection moulded part and there's two of the vents that go on the side of the tank for the engine vents and then on the back you've got the pannier that's the lower part of the pannier goes on the back of the turret quite nicely moulded and there's some other features and parts and bits and bobs I think you'll agree with me that there is very little in the way of flash on this kit and when you think that this kit is a 95 issue it means the model's 24 years old the model was 24 years old when this was put out um, the drive sprockets there. I want to show you the drive sprockets because they're really nice. I like the look of those. They look the part. Crisp, crisp mouldings. Very, very nice. Very nicely moulded. And there are the uh, uh, the return rollers. And though they're small, I mean that's my hand. They're quite small. They're nicely moulded. Very nicely moulded parts. Very nice kit. Very impressed with the parts in this kit. They look fantastic. And that's the top of the turret. Again, I don't have to go for Dantic with that, but it's quite nice, isn't it? There's no fit, um, there's no shell texture to the kit whatsoever, but it is nicely moulded. It's crisp. There's no flash. It's a nice looking kit. It's nicely nicely put together. I like the look of that. So we'll put that there, and we'll just quickly go um, into what I call the gumph to read out and give you the options and costs and stuff. And there is quite. There's quite a bit to the options and costs, but I'll go through them as quickly as possible. The kit itself is an Airfix Panzer IV in Series 2, moulded in 176 scale, or 0080 scale, and carries a serial number of 02308. There are two versions in this kit, one black 141 Panzer IV F1, serving in North Africa, 1941, with the Africa Corps, and one black 216, a Panzer IV Alsf F2, serving in North Africa in 1942 with the Africa Corps. The kit's dimensions are about 3 inches long by 1.5 inches wide by 1 and 1 eighth inches high, and there are 99 parts on four sand-coloured sprues and two vinyl trek parts, producing 101 parts in total. Now the options and the costs, um, they're, they're quite varied in some of the scales, so I'll go through them as best I can. In 1 350th scale, yes I did say 1 350th scale, Aoshima build a twin pack kit comprising of an, a Panzer IV and a Panther tank. Again, no prices available for that, but these two kits are quite highly praised by the, um, 
the pro builders community for very small scale diorama sets and also there's a kit available in 1 285th scale again this is highly praised from micro armor and this kit is a panzer 4 aus f again no pricing available for that either in 1 144th scale there are two kits available from two different companies one is a dragon offering of a panzer 4 aus f2 under horn east in a double pack no pricing is available there. And Ferry Kikaku do a very comprehensive boxing of a Panzer 4 1A, one, sorry, a Panzer 1A, a Panzer 1B, a Panzer 2, two Panzer 3s, a Panzer 4D, and a Panzer 4A. And these kits are all um, in the same box, but again, I've got no prices available for those. In 1 100th one scale, Atelier Invenite do a Panzer 4 Aus H, again, no pricings on that. But for four to five pounds, you can get a Panzer IV Aus D or another box of Panzer IV Aus F from Svezda for about, again, as I said, about four to five quid. 187th scale, Architech do a Panzer IV Aus F. Crown do a Panzer IV Aus F with a cuba wagon in the same box. Elden do a Panzer IV Aus F and an Aus H. Fuji do an Aus H. Hauler do an Aus J. And Muru, uh, Marusan do an Aus F and an Aus H. No prices available for any of these kits, but for twenty-four to twenty-five pound, you can get a model of an Aus G from SDV. UPC do an Aus F and an Aus H, and AHM models do an Aus F and a Cuba wagon, which is a reboxing of the original Crown kit. Again, I've got no pricings for either of these two. In one seventy-six scale. Airfix's Aus F is available from as little as three to maybe ten pound, but I do believe the new release boxes are around about ten to eleven pound in the shops. RI do an Aus G and Cuba wagon kit. Elden does an Aus G. Grip does an Aus G, and IBG does a model Aus A. No pricings available for any of those four kits either, sorry. Nitto does an Aus J for fifteen to eighteen pound, and that model is two star rated, as is the Airfix kit, by the way. And Fujimi does an Aus J, which is a reboxing of the original Nitto kit, for ten to fourteen pound. MPC, the Aus F from the Diorama set, um, Rescue Dunkirk, is a reboxing of the Airfix kit, um, and that is fifteen to twenty pound at present. In 172nd scale, there are quite a large number of these models. Um, Armorfast do a twin pack kit set of an Aus D and G, which is 4 to 850. Corporal Overby's Motorpole does an Aus A, an Aus D, and an Aus D, uh, G. And Cromwell models do Aus F models, all made in resin from these two companies. And again, I've got no pricings on these. Cromwell models do an Aus sorry not Cromwell, Dragon models do an Aus D, F, G and H and these kits are available for between 18 and 20 pound. Esai does an Aus G and an H for 8 to 17 pound. Mirage Hobby do a B, C, D and E. Model Collect does an H variant. Planet models do a J variant. Plastic Soldier does a Panzer IV. WSW Model Bow does a Panzer Aus A. Four, and Winneko does a Panzer IV Aus G. Again, no pricing for any of those six kits. Svesda does an Aus F for twelve to fifteen pound with a two star rating. The modelers like those. And Aurora Panzer IV is the reboxing of the E side kit, as is the Ertel Aus G. No pricings on those. And Gunzai Seo does a Panzer IV, which is the reboxing of the E side kit as well. No pricing for those. Hasegawa rebox the Esai kit as an Aus F, G and H for about ten to eighteen pound, as is the Italeri's Aus F and H version, which is a reboxed Esai kit for about ten to eighteen pound. Now Platts released an Aus G, an Aus F and an Aus H in their Girls in Panzer range, which are reboxed Dragon kits. Polistil does an Aus G, which is a reboxed Esai kit. Ravel does an Aus F, G, H and J as uh, in separate boxings, which are just reboxed Esai kits. And Soldat does an Aus H, which is a reboxed Esai kit. No pricing is available for any of those four. In 150th scale, there's quite an old model offering from Crown of a Panzer IV. No pricing is available. 
Um, and in 148, Bandai does an ALF D and H, no pricings on that. Tamiya does an ALF H and J, which is available for about 20 to 22 pound, and that has a two star rating from the pro builders. And Fuman does an ALF H, which is a reboxed Bandai kit, no pricings available on that. There's also a very old offering in 145th scale with an Otaki Panzer IV. No pricings available on that, but that kit is quite old, and I'm expecting it to go for in excess of 50 quid. In 135th scale, there's a number of kits, one from Academy of an Elf H and J for 18 to 25 pound. Airfix are releasing an Elf H later in 2019. No pricing is available on that, but I'm guessing it's going to be around about 20 quid. Border Model does an Elf G for 30 to 35 pound. Corey Productions does an Elf A, no pricings. Gunzai Sanyo does an Elf F and G for 30 to 35 pound. Italier Rai does an ALF FG and H for £25 to £30. Nichimo do an ALF F for £25 to £30. Tamiya does an ALF G, H and J with three star ratings. The pro builders love this kit for £10 to £22. Tristar does an ALF B, C and D, no pricings available. Cyber Hobby does an ALF B, D, F and J, which is a rebox dragon kit. No pricings available. And Dragon does an ALF A, B, C, D and E, as well as a G and H variants, which are Reebok Gunzai Sanyo kits. But they also do a J and an N, which is an original... No, sorry, the original kits were original Dragon models, but they, they Reebok the Gunzai Sanyo kits as an ALF J and N. Now, the three-star rating on the Dragon kit is only the dra Dragon moulds, and they're all available for between 15 and 50 quid. Hobby Boss does an ALF B and C, which is a tri-star kit rebox for 20 to 35 pound. Italieri does an ALF F, G and H, which is a reboxed Italier I kit for 8 to 30 pound. Model List does an ALF H, which is an academy kit. Platts do an ALF D, which is in their Girls in Panzer range, which is a rebox Dragon kit. Ravel does an ALF H, which is a rebox Gunzai Sanyo kit. Tomi does an ALF F and G, which is an Italier I kit, and Testers does an ALF F, which is a reboxed Italier I kit. No pricing is available for any of those five, but for £25 to £35, you can get a three star rated reboxed Gunzai Sanyo kit from Svezda of an ALF E, F, G, or H. 132nd scale, there's another old offering from Monogram of an ALF F. No pricings available on that, but it has got a two-star rating, and the pro builders quite like that kit too. In one thirtieth scale, Bandai do an Alf G for forty to forty-five pound, and Amai do an Alf G, and the Chimo does an Alf G and H, but no pricings are available for those two kits. Tamiya does an Alf J, no pricings available in one sixteenth scale, and Trumpeter do a one sixteenth scale kit with an Alf F, H, and J, no pricings available for that either. And then you have in 115th scale the AMI ALF F2 and the Bandai ALF F2, which is a reboxed AMI kit. No pricing is available for that. Now then, the conclusions. The kit has really nice detail and neat fitting parts, and it's fairly good accuracy, and this kit is well recommended by pro builders. It can, however, be a little fiddly when constructing the chassis and wheel assemblies, and the vinyl tracks are very old school. It would... I would recommend this kit, and it's fairly cheap, and Airfix have just featured it as a vintage series release, so it is easily available. Models of note are the Fujimi kit in 76th, the Svesda kit in 72nd, the Tamiya kit in 48th, and the Dragon, Tamiya and Trumpeter models, as well as the Svesda model in 35th scale, and Monogram kit in 32nd. It's even okay, though it is an old, it's old as the hills, but the pro builders love all these models in the Worthy of Note section. I must say that um, looking at the parts to this kit, I would pretty much recommend this kit to any type of builder. Um, although if you've never built an Airfix armor kit before, have a go at something a bit simpler before you tackle these um, the wheels. But, you know, if you take your time and use tweezers and... You know, you you make sure everything's going in the right place. The Airfix Panzer IV shouldn't really be that taxing for you. It's not that difficult a kit to build, in my opinion. So that's this model inbox review finished. I hope um, the video has been of some use. If there's any questions or comments that you'd like to make, please pop them in the comments and suggestions box. Thanks for tuning in. Um, also, thanks for the extra few uh, subscribers I've had over the past couple of couple of weeks. Much appreciated. Um, and again, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for the next video.
Thanks for now. Bye-bye.